Hey everyone, so in this video we are going to look at how to make an object function like a magnifying glass or a scope. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a very basic environment so the first couple of minutes really don't matter. It's just make an environment so we have something to magnify. So let's go to Game Object, 3D Object, and we'll create a plane. And then we'll just make that plane a little bit bigger. Two on the X, two on the Z. Let's click on our main camera. That's fine. Now we're going to just create a couple objects so they, again, so we have something to magnify. Game object, 3D object, cube. We'll raise that up a bit, but we want to put it a bit in the distance to make sure it's far enough away so it's very obvious that's being magnified. And let's go ahead and give that a material. We're going to give it color just so it doesn't blend so much into the the plane itself. So right click, create material. We'll just call this blue mat. With the blue mat selected, you can just click here, choose a color, and then you can either rinse and repeat or you can copy the asset. So if you have an asset that took a lot of time to make and you need to make another one of it but slightly different, rather than Starting from scratch, you can just do, with, with the asset selected, you can just do Control D, and it duplicates it. So if, say, you had, like, metallic and smoothness and different settings, those settings would all copy over. We'll just call this one Green Mat. We'll click there, and the green will be for the next object. Okay, so let's apply the blue, just drag and drop it onto that. And then game object, 3D object, sphere. And it really doesn't matter that's intersecting the ground. And actually we will put it above the ground. I'll probably drop it that way. I'll have it start up here and then drop that way you can see that the magnifying glass is working in real time. Okay, so now... The way that this works, to make an object work like a magnifying glass, what you're actually doing is you're using a second camera. So you have a second camera that's positioned in relationship to where the lens object is going to be. So you have a camera. It takes its output, puts it into a render texture, and then the render texture is the texture for that lens. So you've got the camera feeding to the texture and the texture applied to the lens. And when I say lens, I mean the object that works like the lens. So we're going to go to game object, 3D object, and we're going to use cylinder. It's not ideal because it's going to have a little bit of an edge, but I just want to demonstrate that this does indeed work with a 2D. Uh, it's not a 2D, excuse me, that it does indeed work with a round object. So we're just going to click on the scale tool, shrink this in. So it's very, very thin. Again, you can always just create a round plane. But I don't feel like going through that much time. I don't want to waste your time. I just want to demonstrate that round does work. So we'll just rotate this. So we'll make this negative 90. That way it's facing the camera. And we'll just increase the scale. We'll do like a 2. And we'll do a 2. Okay, so that is our lens object. If we just click on our main camera, that way you could see the preview. Okay, next. So let's go ahead and create the camera. So game object, and then we do camera. And actually, let's go ahead and rename the cylinder lens. Now we're going to take that camera, we're going to drag and drop it onto the lens. So basically the camera is a parent, uh, excuse me, the lens is a parent to the camera, the camera is a child to the lens. So what happens is when the lens moves, the camera will move. Because if the camera didn't move, then you what you'd have is you'd have a stationary point of view. So you want the camera to move with the lens. So we'll take our camera and we'll move it to the lens. And just so you know, depending on what you're trying to do, the positioning of the camera may take some doing. Because this is just to show you the broad strokes. To get exactly what you want, you might have to reposition the camera a little bit more precisely. Now, 
to get this to actually magnify, all right, because right now the camera is where the lens is, so it really wouldn't look magnified, at least not substantially. So what we need to do is we need to either move the camera further in front of the lens or you can change the field of view. There's pros and cons to both of them. I'm not going to go through the detail of that simply because when you apply this to your project, you'll be able to determine which one works to you. But I'll show you a little bit of both. So moving the camera is literally just that. Since I've got this camera selected, you can see the preview here that things are getting closer, things are getting bigger. Likewise, you can change the field of view. So if you make it smaller, then once again, it's getting closer. So some combination of those will get you where you want to be. And let's just shrink that in a little bit more. Okay, so if we click on... Um, actually, before we run that again, because the camera isn't outputting anywhere. So that was, the, that was the first and second step. We have the lens object, we have the camera. Now we need the render texture. So right-click, create, render texture, and we'll just call this lens matte. And this is super simple. You click on that camera right here, target texture. You just put it there. And then you apply the texture to the lens. And now we are just about done. So let's rotate around. OK, so far so good. Let's click on our lens. We move it over. Now, let's click on this one so we can see them both. So you can see that it does look closer, but the problem is the lens is kind of far away. If you're using a magnifying glass, if you're using a, a scope, more than likely this is going to be much closer to the screen. So let's bring this closer to the screen. And then, like I said, you can either move the camera forward or you can work on... You can modify the field of view. So let's go ahead and zoom in. Okay. Let's see how much a difference that makes. So now you can see that that is way in the distance, but it's really close up for your magnifying glass. Like I said, since there's a, since you actually technically have thickness here, it's being cast here too, so that's why you'd actually want to use a plane because you don't want all that unnecessary processing. But you can clearly see it's magnifying. So as far as how you would use this, you'd probably have it be centered if you're using it on, say, a scope. If it's a magnifying glass, you might want to have the movement of this be based on, say... You may want it based on um, the movement of the mouse, that kind of thing. So we're just going to reposition this again. You may find that you actually might need to tilt the camera. Again, it, it all depends what you're trying to do. I really can't come up with all the different options, all the different applications for this. I just wanted to show you the basics of making a uh, uh, something that works like a magnifying glass or a scope. And I'll just do one more thing, just to demonstrate that this is happening in real time. What we'll do is we will have this drop. So we'll just put this up into the air and then we will add physics rigid body yes we want gravity to be used and we will run this and you could see it dropped into view and i guess we could move the lens a little bit more towards the center and we'll just move our objects There we go. So what you would do is if you want this to be, say, a scope, you would put a, another model around this surrounding it. So it'd be like the frame to the scope. And then you'd have like the stock and the barrel here. That's about it. So 
I hope that you found this useful. I hope this was helpful to you. And again, there are many applications for this. I've, I've mentioned just a few, such as a scope, such as magnifying glass, microscope, telescope. You could also use it for, say, a monitor. So say you're playing something like Five Night at Freddy's and you have cameras. Well, the camera would cast the image to whatever is being a monitor so what it would be is rather than having the lens mat applied to this the lens mat would be applied to the monitor so i think that's about it if you have any questions just let me know again i hope this was helpful and hope you have a good night